India should be very interested and involved in climate change for a number of reasons. One is it would be very sensitive to any change in climate that occurred. Uh, India is very dependent on the monsoon and people know that changes in the monsoon from one year to another are extremely important. However, if the climate changes in the manner that could happen, then the Indian monsoon would change both in terms of its mean and its variability, and that would have huge impacts on the population here. So in terms of the impact of climate change, they should be concerned, but in terms of the opportunity as well, um, the world is as it is now, and India is developing its technologies. And as it does so, it has the opportunity be, to be leading on the technologies that will be needed in the future. And those are the technologies that can actually mitigate the, the impact on climate, in particular by not releasing the CO2, the carbon dioxide. So India has an opportunity and it has a threat. So I think it should grab the opportunity and minimize the threat. The UK Climate Change Committee has been a very important event in my life in terms of how I think I can influence things. But in terms of UK political situation, the Climate Change Bill, which was passed last November in the UK Parliament, and the Climate Change Committee has changed things because now we have a, an independent committee that is advising government on targets for CO2 emissions not just in 2050, but now and the next 15 years. And the UK government has taken the advice we're given them and is putting those targets through Parliament. And from the flavour I'm getting now, those targets will go through Parliament. And the situation we're then going to have is that the targets for the UK will be enshrined in our law. So the governments of the UK can't just have as a whim, oh, we're not going to worry about that anymore. It is an imperative for all of them, unless they repeal those laws, to put in the policies that will achieve those laws. Now, the Climate Change Committee has looked at the sort of policies that might be required. The overall thing, I think, is to actually give certainty to industry that this is not just a flavour of this month or one political party in power. Whatever government we have, this is the direction so that industry knows they can invest for the long term and look for those new opportunities, invest money now, and they will get the payback in 10, 20, 30 years time. It's setting the future direction. The, the actual pol individual policies, then the Climate Change Committee has said, well, there could be this or there could be this. We are not in government, so we should not be policy prescriptive but we have given an idea of the sort of policies that might be needed. And when the government produces their policies, and the first round of that will be this summer, then we will be commenting on those policies in our report to Parliament. And we will be saying whether we think those policies are likely to achieve the targets that they have accepted and are enshrined in law. So in a policy manner, this is extremely important we have the overall general direction and we have a mechanism for looking at the policies in place and seeing whether they are sufficient. The UK has a very diverse set of voices and that's healthy in democracy like India, there are many voices coming forward. We, but the Climate Change Bill went through Parliament. I think it was 454 and one against. So almost everyone agreeing that this is the direction to go. And I think this is a, a recognition that as a concern for the, for the world, this is of great importance. In fact, for thinking of 50 to 100 years time, of overwhelming importance and that we all, however large or small our contribution to that problem is at the moment, are involved in that decision. 
I think it's also a recognition that um, there will be some industries that will decline. Those industries will tend to decline anyway. Uh, the change from the horse to the motor car meant that some, some livelihoods were actually not as good. They had to change what they did. But in general, one could see that was the direction to go and the overwhelming voices said, we must be going in that direction. We have a new challenge, which is far more than that. It's actually looking further ahead, but it's actually action now. And somehow one has to get above the everyday babble of voices that are heard and the decisions that are made to say, yes, we hear all that diversity, but overall there is the imperative in terms of the climate and the opportunities for India determine we must go in this direction. There will be different ways of doing it, different policy choices, but those shouldn't obscure the direction we're going in. I mean, I, I think that for India and China, this is a, gives a tremendous opportunity. Um, partly, if you're starting from a lower base in terms of one's industries, and then you can go on the track that others will try to change to later on. And looking at the technologies that are developed, the huge opportunities in the energy market, say in India and China, um, are just, they're fantastic. And they are there for individual Indian companies to work on and work in terms of the global industries and linking with those global industries. This is where the markets are. This is where the developments can be. And the world desperately needs India and China to take this new course. Don't go down the direction we've gone. And the industries in the developed countries will be looking to join in with you because this is where the growing markets are. So I think there's a tremendous opportunity both for the home industries and linking with those global industries to develop and go along this new path. A venture capitalist, I, in, in somewhere like India, I hope will be able to link in, for instance, with a, a new development in Europe where there is an intention to start major new effort in innovation in three fields in um, IT, energy and climate change. And so this is not the research, it is actually the innovation getting the venture capitalists along with the latest research to try and get the new industries developed. And Europe is saying it will put 100 million euros into this per annum and it's aiming to get academics and industrialists together in this context. And I would hope that this would provide a context which would involve not just European industries, but those in India, for instance, and maybe could provide a vehicle to help the venture capitalist realize in a slightly larger domain that they have slightly less risk. Although as venture capitalists, they'll always be going for the risk but maybe they can feel slightly more confident given these larger scale structures taking this forward. I think the overwhelming thing for the business model is first to reduce it, the uncertainty and this as in the Climate Change Committee and what is happening in the UK, requires government to actually say, this is the direction we're going on a long term, and for everyone to agree, this is the direction we're going. And so that's the overwhelming, the overriding thing, I think, is to, to make it easier for people to see that this is a lesser risk that we're going in this direction. Um, the actual business model, I'm not an expert myself, um, but I can see opportunities for the smaller scale, whether they be um, photovoltaics, um, solar power in some way, or perhaps wind, smaller industries linking with residences and, and building up from a smaller base, 
might be easier. The carbon capture and sequestration model is a very important one, I believe, that we've got to be able to capture the carbon from power stations and sequester it either in building material or else under the ground. Um, but that is very large scale funding required for that, long time scale and demonstration projects going through eventually to the market, maybe in 2025, 2030. And so really those need government assistance and large scale demonstrations, and those should be international demonstrations. So really, I would concentrate on the small and local thing that one could build on and develop because the, the residential nature, the individual household or the individual person and how they can easily make the right decisions in their own lifestyle is crucial here. So everyone will need this and the small businesses can start by giving those people the easy choice, making it easy for them to make a choice which is helpful in terms of mitigating climate change. So if we can reduce the amount of energy that is used to heat water, to cook, um, to cool, whatever is, is done, then that would be great for mitigating climate change and an easier way to, to build businesses. There is no doubt if the world population could stabilize at 3 billion people, this would make handling climate change a lot easier. At the moment, the thoughts are that the population will stabilize at around, or stop growing at around 9 billion. So, I mean, it is difficult to stand outside and say, this is what should happen in any individual country. And clearly the decisions have to be made in in individual countries about population growth and how to handle this. But every country realizes that just in terms of the infrastructure uh, it has to provide, and certainly in, in terms of dealing with the, um, the emissions of greenhouse gases, then the problem becomes worse the larger the population becomes. At the moment, we think that at the 9 billion level, then every citizen in the world might have an entitlement in 2050 of about two tons of, of carbon of CO2 per year. Now, if the population was three billion, that could be six tons of carbon dioxide per year. Now, so the one would be a lot, lot easier than the other. And if countries of the world can do anything to stabilize their populations at a, a lower level than presently anticipated, that will certainly help them progressing forward to the developed state they wish to be. Uh, and it will help the world in dealing with climate change. The opportunities for Indians, um, let me start with the research. Um, then I believe that this climate change and climate variability and change, because I like the link the two, are so important that if we started science now, there's no way we would have the concentration we have in some areas. Um, um, thinking about the first second of the universe is clearly intellectually challenging and very important, but actually thinking about the next hundred years of human beings on Earth and the rest of the, the natural world, I think is actually, to me, rather more important. So when one's thinking of a career, you could say, well, what is going to be important for this planet? What will be the expanding opportunities? And so for students, those are in understanding the problem and in how to adapt to the changes that occur and how to try and minimize those changes. So getting into the technologies that will be needed. And that is the opportunity also for those in business. Here is the place that, if you think now, we, the world's been in a recession. And as we come out of that, what are the technologies that will be so important in 30 years time? Where should I put my money in terms of starting a company? What's going to be the rapidly expanding areas? I think it's very clear. Climate change and the limitation of resources, both 
oil, gas, and to a certain extent coal, all point in the same direction. We should be trying to minimize our use of these fossil fuels, and we should be dealing with the clean technologies that will be required. Those are what we'll be expanding in future. So if you're starting out now in education or in terms of a company, look to where the future is. Another aspect of the choice for young people is thinking what the funding situation will be in future. And I know in the UK, there are expanding opportunities in the areas associated with the problems and their solutions. And uh, there are new arrangements taking place as a university, new groupings organized around these new ideas. And I'm sure in India, the same opportunities will be developing Often universities, academia is just a little bit slow in seeing where it's going to go, but it's starting to happen. And I'm sure the funding will follow as many foundations are starting to see that this is where they should put their money. And research councils all around the world are seeing this is the new direction. So the established departments sometimes try and put a break on this, but that's where the real opportunities will be in future.